So what I want to do in this video is demonstrate a really cheap and easy way to test uh, if your masks or respirators uh, fit you correctly at home. So first, a really important disclaimer here. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a mask expert. I don't work for the NOSH organization. I've never done an official fit test myself. I'm pretty much just a random person that has sort of researched this stuff. And this is a system that I use at home that I think other people could benefit from just seeing me do and think about if they want to do it for themselves. I provide really no guarantee that this is going to keep you safe uh, or, or not exposed to whatever it is you're trying to prevent exposure to by wearing a mask. You know, use common sense here. Uh, and just because you pass this test uh, using uh, the system that I'm, I'm going to demonstrate here doesn't mean that you're protected. And this is super important to know. This is not a silver bullet. This is just a way uh, to test, to get more information about your mask. And uh, you know, if you fail this test with your masks, that might mean that your masks don't fit you. And so you might wanna go look for other masks uh, that might fit you better, or think about ways of adjusting your mask so that it might fit you better. You know, adding some tape around the nose, things like this. And there's a lot of videos on that. Um, and so that's my disclaimer here. This is not uh, you know, advice in, intended to keep you safe or anything like that. This is just information that I think uh, people would like to know uh, that I personally uh, have benefited from. And so uh, without for, further ado here, this is, this is the setup. So the first thing that you're going to need is a nebulizer. And this is a portable nebulizer that I got off of Amazon. I think that this was about $38. Uh, they seem to range in price from maybe $35 to, I don't know, there's some that are pretty expensive, uh, but they seem to be around $35 to $45. Uh, you probably wanna get one that's a little portable like this. They make some that are bigger, that have like hoses and stuff. I'm not really sure, I'm not really familiar with what uh, all the different types are, but you kinda want one that's portable that you can move around. Uh, and then this one has a little USB charger thing that I liked. Uh, and so you want to get one of these. You might already have one uh, or someone in your house might already have one for asthma or something like that because they're used uh, for that purpose. They're not really built for this. Uh, and then there's, for the second thing, there's basically two options here. One option, which is the cheap and easy option, is to get some Sweet and Low. And uh, this is Sweet and Low. It contains uh, saccharin. It's an artificial sweetener. And you can find this stuff at like any diner in the world or any restaurant in the world. It's the little pink packets. Uh, and um, you want to get uh, a fair number of these uh, for, the, for the formula, uh, for the recipe here. Uh, I think you need about 13 packets to make it. Um, so you might have to buy a box or something of this, or you might have some around or might be able to find some of this. Uh, it's really inexpensive. Uh, there are other saccharin-based artificial sweeteners that you could use. For my uh, recipe here that I've derived from uh, the U.S. Army's uh, guidelines for doing do-it-yourself fit testing of respirators uh, in, in field settings, uh, I'm using the, the amount of saccharin that is in the sweet and low packet for my recipe. So if you're going to use a different saccharin-based artificial sweetener, you're going to want to consult the guide that I'm going to link below this video uh, written by the U.S. Army and look at the amount in grams, I think it's 0.83 grams of saccharin that they use for their formula and then sort of figure out how many grams of saccharin are in your packets and then sort of do the math. Uh, personally, when I've done this before with the sweet and low, I kind of just mix it until it's got a ton of sweet and low in it, but uh, I like to follow an exact formula too. So that's that. Don't I, I, I don't think you can use other artificial sweeteners with like xylitol and other stuff. I, I don't think you can. I've never seen that talked about. So stick to the saccharin-based uh, sweeteners. And then the other possibility is to purchase uh, something called Bitrex or Bitter uh, uh, Formula. And this is uh, something that I got. This is from 3M. Uh, I don't. I think there are a bunch of other solutions available. I think this was like twenty dollars uh, on Amazon. I got this some time ago, and this is readily available. There are other manufacturers that make this. Uh, it's basically just let's see here. It's water, sodium chloride, and I can't say it. Uh, I'm not going to bother saying the last name. Dentonium benzoate or something, uh, and that's the bitter stuff. I think 
And so this bitter solution, um, you can also make yourself. And in the Army, the U.S. Army Guide, they have a, a sort of a instruction a recipe for creating your own bitter solution from the, um, the ingredients. Uh, so if, for instance, this stuff is all sold out after this video or something like that, um, you can get the ingredients yourself and make it yourself. So the, the real difference here uh, between these, when I first did this at home, this, this uh, do-it-yourself fit testing method, I used the sweet and low packets. And what I found with the sweet and low packets was it definitely worked, uh, and I could definitely taste it when there was a leak. Um, but the problem is sort of your mouth has kind of an ambient sweetness sometimes, and you can, it's, it's just, a, for me at least, it was a little harder to taste the sweet. And then this stuff is, is like, it tastes like poison. It tastes like you've consumed a poisonous plant or something. It's really, really intense. And for me, I can't miss it. As soon as I taste it, it's like, ugh, it's really bad. So I like this because it was so prominent. Uh, it made me feel a little more secure when I was doing this test that I was actually testing. Uh, I was getting the, the flavor as soon as, it, as soon as the seal was broken or as soon as it leaked through the mask. Uh, so that's why I like this stuff. And uh, if, you, if you really want to do this uh, hardcore, you might want to get some of this or make some of this. Um, but as part of official uh, fit testing programs, they do use a saccharin-based solution as well as a bitter-based solution. So both of these are totally legitimate methods. And this method that I'm going to demonstrate here using the nebulizer and using a hood that we're going to construct using a garbage bag is actually very, very similar to the, the, uh, the uh, fit testing, the qualitative fit testing program that is done in hospitals and occupational safety programs to ensure that people that are working every day and wearing respirators or wearing masks are wearing masks that fit them correctly and don't unnecessarily expose them to what they don't want to be exposed to. And so... Um, while this seems maybe kind of random, this is actually pretty close to the, to the method that's used by uh, professionals. And those kits, which you can buy, uh, the fit testing kits from these companies are like $800 sometimes. They're very, very expensive. All of the materials for this test, uh, it's about $40 if you exclude the cost of the sweet and low. If you throw this in, it could be $60 total. Uh, but, you know, depending upon, you know, what the availability of the things, you might already have a nebulizer and then you might have to just buy some of this or you might already have Sweet Low. So, but this is definitely much, much cheaper than, uh, than buying the fit, twist, fit testing equipment. And a little bit of background, uh, as far as I know, there's basically two uh, uh, real legitimate fit testing methods that are used by hospitals and, and, and you know, occupational safety stuff, construction sites and asbestos things and this and that. Um, one is called the qualitative fit test, which is the kind of fit test that we're going to do today. The other is called a quantitative fit test. And the quantitative fit test, I think, is a lot more like accurate uh, from the studies that I've read. You have to puncture the mask with this little like tube thing and you use this machine. And it's a specialized piece of equipment that generates little aerosols. And uh, that machine, like I have no idea how to get it. I think you can rent it for like $200 or $300 for a month. Uh, but I think it's pretty expensive and specialized. Uh, but this method of qualitative fit testing, where you taste the thing and then you discover when, whether or not your mask fits you, is used by hospitals and other places. Um, and so this is a legitimate way of, of, of testing whether or not your mask fits. But um, keep in mind, this is not 100% uh, going to keep you safe. Uh, this is just sort of another thing to check uh, if you're wearing a mask. So, so there's basically two methods here that I'm going to demonstrate. So the first method is the simplified method. And this is the method that is very quick. You pretty much buy a nebulizer or find a nebulizer. You make the solution with the sweet and low, which I'm going to go over. You put the sweet and low solution, or if you have the bitter solution, you put it into the nebulizer. You turn the nebulizer on. You kind of, you put your mask on and then you you kind of just run the nebulizer and suck air in and see if you can feel it leaking around the mask. And even just doing that is a huge, huge improvement over just sort of seeing if air is leaking or if, seeing if it feels or looks good on your face. Because uh, you, can, you can notice just simple things. You can notice that maybe you have too much stubble and the mask is not fitting your face correctly if you have some facial hair. Um, you can notice all kinds of things just with that simple method. So I would definitely recommend people check this out and try it out. If the other method is we're going to show, or I won't actually show in this video because I've already constructed mine, 
Um, you can make basically a hood uh, out of a garbage bag uh, and some, some uh, uh, clothes hangers that you, you break apart, duct tape and dental floss. Uh, and if you have a, um, a uh, what is it called, a carabiner, that also helps, and a stick. And I'll demonstrate my hood that I constructed using, using these things. So, and so I'm gonna go through these different methods. First though, I wanna show you how to make the uh, saccharin solution using just simple sweet mo packets. So what we're gonna do is bring water to a boil, leave the water boiling for about two minutes or so, then let it cool down a little bit, uh, make sure that it's still somewhat warm. Uh, and then once it's cooled a little bit, but it's still pretty hot, measure out 50 milliliters of the boiled water, and then pour in the 13 packets of sweet and low, and then mix the sweet and low into the water. And then we then, after this is cooled, have a solution of saccharin that is ready to be placed into the nebulizer. I want to emphasize here uh, that I am not an expert on really any of this stuff, uh, but when doing these qualitative fit tests, it seems to me that, you know, you're, say, the hospital is doing something like this, and their version, which is probably slightly better than this version, right? This is a sort of hacked together method of this. But when they're doing this in a hospital, they're using masks that are known to be the real thing. So they're using maybe a real N95 that they bought from the supplier directly and they totally know it's legitimate, right? And so in that environment, they're mostly testing the seal of the mask and they already know that the mask material, the filtration efficiency of that material was specced out and, and the quality was assured by the manufacturer. And so the test, the qualitative fit test, I think is probably mostly testing the seal of the mask. This test doesn't seem like it's a really good test of the material itself. So if you're, if you're testing like a random mask you bought off of Amazon, I would be really careful because I don't know that this test is really going to give you uh, a strong assurance that even if you pass the test, the mask is gonna protect you. And in general, you know, this is not a safety guarantee of any sort. It's just another piece of information that you can have. The same way that if you feel your mask leaking into your glasses and your glasses fog up, that probably means your mask doesn't fit you. If you do this test at home and that you fail, that probably means that that mask uh, doesn't necessarily fit you. Or you might be wise to find a workaround. So first here, I'm going to demonstrate uh, using the nebulizer without using the custom hood that, uh, that's made out of garbage bag. Um, so I'm going to take my nebulizer here that I have and I'm going to pour, it already has a little bit here, but I'm going to put a little bit more of this solution. This is the Bitrex solution, the bitter solution that I have. You can also use the saccharin solution that we made or that you made if you made it, if you have it. Uh, and I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna close it. First thing I'm gonna do here is just turn it on so you can see what's going on. Um, and so there we go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually taste it. And so what, I, what we do during this test is we don't just run it with our mouth closed and stuff. What we do is we kinda of wanna stick your tongue in a little bit and breathe through your mouth so you can taste it. If your mouth is totally closed, I mean, you might eventually taste it or something, but I think you're probably supposed to leave your mouth open. At least that's what I do. Kind of breathe through your mouth. It looks gross, but I have to show you. So I'm going to test it out before I put on the mask. I'm tasting already, but... Oh, oh. God, it tastes... Re this one tastes really bad. Unmistakable poison, poison taste. Uh, so that's what it tastes like. I can taste it really easily. Really nasty stuff. So um, you want to make sure before you do the test that you haven't really eaten anything super recently. And if you, you know, maybe rinse your mouth out with water and, you know, wait 10 minutes or something because uh, you want your mouth to be, to be clear of any sort of contaminants. Uh, and you might want to wipe your lips with a, with a paper towel or something. Make sure you don't have any you know, snot or whatever on your face that you might taste that would interfere with your sense of, of taste. The first mask I will test here using the simplified method is a KN95 that I got a long time ago. I don't remember from where or if it was legitimate or anything like that, 
but it's really, as I've learned more about masks, this is not a great mask. It doesn't really fit me right, but I'll put it on and I'll show you here. So kind of got it on here. Okay. Feel it, feel it on me or whatever. So I'm going to show you uh, what happens here. Even the simplified method. I don't need the hood for this to, to know what's going on here. So if I turn this on, get here and this, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to breathe in. Oh, I taste it instantly there through my tongue. I'm sticking my tongue out a little bit, breathing through my mouth. Tasting it again there. So the problem with this method where it makes it so tricky is you have to suck the air into the mask and you can't always do that because it's going to just dissipate in the air, all of the aerosols and stuff that are being generated by this uh, little nebulizer. So it's, it's very, uh, you know, you kind of have to suck the air in. It's just, I don't know how, how good this really is. It's kind of a hacky system, but if you fail on this one, it's, it's probably not, I mean, it's probably not a good mask for you. So down here, Not really sucking the air in, I don't think. There we go. Tasting it there. Tasting it there for sure. Ooh, bitter. Oh, no. Oh. I mean, it's it's all over. Oh, really bad around the nose there. Even though it's, it, you can see, it looks like it's pretty well sealed against the nose, right? If I were to look at this, it looks like it's kind of on my nose, right? Oh, oh, really bad, really, really bad. And so this is just, I mean, this, even if I hold it tightly to my face, maybe, oh, I still taste, it's really, really bad. This mask, this is a really, for me, this is not a good mask, maybe for you, but like I mentioned earlier in this video, the KN95s tend to not be uh, legitimate. A lot of them are not really, you know, this might not actually have the melt blown, whatever, uh, stuff that the you know fancy masks are supposed to have to actually filter particles out and so um, be really careful with these kn95s uh, and in particular i want to link below uh, there's a guy uh, armburst i think is his name you know i'm going to edit this video and add the correct name a, a guy in uh, austin i believe that has a mask factory uh, and he went and purchased every single mask on Amazon and tested them all, every single mask that Amazon sold, tested them all and then showed the filtration efficiency and how they smelled and stuff like that. And wow, almost every mask you can buy on Amazon uh, does not work very well uh, at all. So be really careful. This surgical mask is a, uh, what's called an AS, let me put this on here, I'm gonna put this on. So this is, uh, you know, you can buy surgical masks, this and that, but w if you're looking for a, a surgical mask that is high quality in the United States, there's a standard called ASTM. And you wanna find an ASTM level two or level three surgical mask. And those surgical masks, the, the actual material that's inside of the mask is, uh, is kind of the same as the material that's in an N95. And I didn't know this uh, before, but it's, it filters out a lot of the, the particles. It's like 95 plus percent of the, the same, uh, you know, what is it, 0 0.3 micron particles or something like that. The problem with the surgical masks that are ASTM level two and three, or certified by some other government certifying body in other countries uh, have these bodies. And so you wanna do your own research on this. I purchased this from a, a real medical supply company. And this is made by an American company in the United States. Uh, and it is an ASTM level two or level three mask. I think it feels like a, a level three because it kind of has an anti-oil coating or something like that. So I turn this nebulizer on again here with the simplified method. So I'm gonna do the nose here, which feels pretty good. I'm tasting it there for sure. I don't know if it's coming in through the nose or somewhere else, but. Yeah, I'm definitely tasting tasting it. Um, but if I do it below, ooh, hits me really quickly. But the nose, it takes a few seconds. I, and I can tell if I hold it, ooh, really bad there. I can taste it on the side. Ooh, ooh, 
really bad, right? I mean, we know that it's leaking, right? Like, we don't really even have to test because we know this mask is not totally adhered to my face. But if I were to wear a mask brace, which I'm going to demonstrate, and it totally sealed on my face, I can't taste it there, which is kind of cool, right? Because the mask itself is actually filtering out these particles, but it's so hard to seal it, right? So I need a, a some sort of mask brace, which is one of the recommended things from the, the Center for Disease Control. Uh, so now I have the um, mask uh, fitter brace uh, called Fix the Mask uh, on. This is the Fix the Mask Essential Mask Brace, and I'll link it below here and information about it. I, I believe that this is the small size, which is a little tight on me on the nose and stuff. Uh, but I kind of tighten it on here, and you can see just... Just how much of a better fit I have. Uh, I'm not sure if this will totally pass here. I don't know. I've actually never tested with this on. But uh, let's give it a go here. Around the nose. Not getting anything. Not getting anything around the nose. Sides. Not get anything on the side there. Not tasting anything underneath. Not get anything here. So you can really see in this test in particular because there's not a lot of suction around the sides of this mask. I do taste a slight amount of bitterness. I am tasting a slight amount of bitterness. So there's some sort of leak here probably, but it's not as not nearly as strong. I, I don't feel the uh, super strong uh, bitterness that I was experiencing before. But, um, you know, there is some kind of uh, problem here with this, the simplified just moving around uh, technique is that, you know, you really have to inhale a lot and it's it's hard to tell you know, where, where it's, uh, uh, you can figure out maybe where it's leaking, but it's not, uh, it's, it's really not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is, is in the hood, which I'm going to show next. Uh, but you can see just with this mask brace on, it's a much, much better seal. It performed way better than this KN95, which was just really, really poor. And, um, I think if I tweak this, maybe if I switch to the larger size here, it might be leaking around the nose or something. I'm not sure. I'm getting a little bit of that little bit of that bitter but it's it's so so faint it's kind of hard to tell um but i i think i might be able to get the the ta uh, test to pass if i tweak this a little bit and uh, messed around with it but you can see it's just a much much better uh, setup uh, with the surgical mask and just this mask fitter here so this is a good option probably for people that uh, if for some reason you don't have access to a uh an n95 or uh, perhaps your workplace doesn't allow you to wear one. Uh, they require surgical masks, and you're not allowed to wear a surgical mask over an N95 or something like that. I don't really know. But uh, I do know that this is uh, an option, and um, in surgical masks, you can buy boxes of them uh, really easily. And uh, just make sure, like I said before, you get a test where you have to see that it's ASTM level 2 or 3 in the United States, and then other countries have different standards. Uh, and you want to make sure that it's the one that actually filters out the particles and stuff. Uh, so anyway, so that's that's the uh, fix the mask brace here. And now I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do is show you the um, the hood setup that I have here uh, that I've already built, and uh, and then uh, go through that. You're going to want to pause the video here and take a look at this uh, diagram made by the U.S. Army Public Health Center or look at the link in the description of this video uh, where I link to the uh, complete guide uh, published by the U.S. Army. Uh, and then this includes the uh, uh, descriptions of how to create the different solutions uh, that can be placed in the nebulizer as well. This is the hood, fit testing hood that I have constructed. Uh, this is a trash bag here. And what you'll see is there's a piece of string here and this is just dental floss that I, I put several strands of dental floss because it was the only string that I had. And then it's attached to a carabiner here. And then there's just a stick that I had lying around that was large enough that I could create 
an area where I could hang the hood. The idea here is that you can tell, see there's a loop here, there's a loop in there that keeps it sort of uh, together so that you can stand inside of it. Uh, and that's that's the idea. And this uh, hoop here, in my case, I used two metal clothes hangers that were uh, sort of bent out and then looped together, duct taped together tightly into a circle. And then you kind of just attach at equidistant parts the uh, string or dental floss or whatever, pull it together into a into a centerpiece, and then you poke a hole in the bag where those little strings come out. Then you sort of tape it up at the at the top so that it's sealed because this needs to be all sealed up. So you duct tape it at the top so it's all sealed. You run the string up and then you attach it to something where you're hanging it somewhere. We have a little hole here, right here in the bag that was put, and this is where you stick the nebulizer in. And then the other thing you do is when you stand in the bag, you pull the um, the bag closer thingy on the garbage bag tight around your waist or whatever, so that you're you're sort of on you're sealed in there. And then you the idea is you fill the bag up with aerosols from the nebulizer and the whatever droplets. They're all inside that bag, floating around, floating around. And then you're doing your little thing inside this bag, and so it's all very confined, and you can really test the uh, mask or respirator. So keep in mind, what you're going to need is you're going to need someone else uh, to help you with this because someone else has to stand outside of the hood and hold the nebulizer into the hood. There might be some sort of way that you could you could do this without someone else, but this is just sort of the way that you're supposed to do it. So you have someone else standing outside of the hood with the, the nebulizer put through the little hole that we're going to make in the, in the trash bag. Uh, and then you're doing things or the person that's testing their mask or respirator is inside of there performing a series of tasks. And so the idea is you wanna sort of uh, test the mask out in the range of uh, activities that you would be performing while wearing the mask. And so the, the series of steps, and I'll go through them here, are uh, first, normal breathing. So you go into the hood and you just breathe like normal. That was a deep breath, but you just breathe like normal inside of the hood. And so you're just breathing, you're just hanging out there, you have the mask on, you're just standing there. Uh, then after you do that, you do deep breathing. And I'm consulting the list here. You do deep breathing. So it's... Not so hard you're going to blow your mask off. But like, you know, kind of the deep breaths you might take if you were doing something strenuous. Heavy breaths, lots of breath going through. Okay, that's step number two. Step number three is turning your head side to side. So turning it to the left. Keeping it there for a few seconds, maybe 20 seconds, 10 seconds, a few seconds, leaving it there, breathing, turning it to the left, breathing, and then back, left, right, you know, again, okay? And then after that, what you do is you tilt your head up. Breathe in when it's up, hold it there, tilt your head down. Breathe in and out, tilt your head up, leave it there, tilt your head down, leave it there. Okay, and then talking, and this is kind of a fun one. So when you're inside of the, the hood, uh, what you do is you talk, have a conversation, talk about things. Uh, don't just say the same word over and over again they have a suggested passage you're supposed to say called the rainbow passage which i'll put on the screen here and the rainbow passage is uh, a passage that uses in english all of the different ways of moving your mouth around and stuff so you can use this passage you can print it out and hold it in the hood with you or something and read it um, or you could just kind of talk for a while talk a bunch of random stuff uh that's what i do i just stand in the hood and i talk for a while um uh and then number six is bending over uh, or jogging in place. And so uh, bending over might be a little difficult inside of the hood, depending upon how you have it set up. Uh, in my case here in this, in this pantry, it's kind of hard, but you can kind of like tilt your head down or, you know, I guess if you could bend over or something, 
but like you're gonna grab something, you know, like this maybe. So the mask, the gravity is pulling the mask down because some masks will fall off your face or move away from your face if you lean forward. So we're not just going like this, we're really leaning forward, right? So I can feel my glasses moving forward. So something like that, but it might be impossible to do that. So the suggestion from the army is jogging in place if, if uh, bending over doesn't work. So I guess you could kind of like go like this and jog maybe with your head down or something like that. The idea is we really want to, to stress the mask. Uh, and then the number seven is repeat step number one, which is just regular breathing. So you stand inside the hood uh, and you just breathe for a while with the mask on. Uh, so those are the steps. Um, and they also suggest, or, or the first thing that you should do, uh, what they do as part of this test and what, what you're supposed to do, uh, especially if you've never done this before, is see how long it actually takes to, to taste the solution that you've made. So either the saccharin solution or the bitter solution that you're using. So you go into the hood and you stand there without a mask on, you know, just regular. You go into the hood, you do the little thing that I'll show. You're in the little hood and then you basically, you know, kind of like breathe out of your mouth, tongue here, and see like your friend or partner or someone who's doing the nebulizer through the hole, they're doing it, they have it on for a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. But what you wanted to see is they, they're running it and then you wanna see how long it takes for the little particles, the aerosols and stuff in there for you to actually taste it. Uh, Cause it's gonna depend on the size of the thing and how much stuff is being put up on the nebulizer. You can't always depend upon uh, it. Uh, uh, you know, you don't wanna, for instance, if it takes 20 seconds for you to taste something without even a mask on and you're in there testing the mask in a variety of positions. You wanna make sure that you're testing it long enough to be able to taste it. Hopefully that should make sense. So you, the first trial is really, you should just test it out on your own without a mask on inside the hood. See about how long it takes. Uh, for me, it's usually a couple of seconds uh, because the nebulizer I have puts out a lot and I'm pretty used to being able to taste it. So I can usually taste it within a few seconds. And if I'm wearing an ill-fitting mask, I can take a few seconds. Uh, sometimes, like if I put on a surgical mask, like a real ASTM level two surgical mask, it can actually take a pretty, we could take like 10 or 15 seconds for me to actually taste any of this stuff because the mask is blocking most of it, but it takes a while for me to start to taste it through the sides. So when you're going through these steps, uh, steps one through seven here, um, you should make sure to give yourself an ample amount of time uh, to taste the solution through the uh, through the inside the hood when you're doing these tests. So uh, now I'm going to demonstrate the uh, the process of actually going into the hood with a mask on in this case because I've done it so many times without the mask and the taste test thing. Uh, hopefully that is self-explanatory. So I'll just show you what it's like to test one normal mask, and then hopefully you should be able to to get the idea behind this because this is not a, a strict procedure. This is not the official. We're not doing an official qualitative fit test at a hospital. This is not an official certification or anything that you shouldn't, you know, your life shouldn't depend upon the exact result of this test. This is just another data point uh, to consider when uh, thinking about masks and your mask quality uh, and your mask fit. So uh, I am going to now go inside the hood and I'm going to put on a mask that um, I know does not really fit me perfectly, but kind of uh, kind of fits me pretty well. Like it, it almost looks like it fits me really well. Uh, and so I'm gonna put that on and then you'll see what happens. The mask I'm wearing here, it fits pretty well, but I can kind of feel that it doesn't fit perfectly because I haven't tightened the ear loops. Uh, so I'm just going to demonstrate to see how long it takes for me to fail on this mask. All right, so I'm gonna get inside of here. It's a little cramped to say the least, oops. So uh, it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it, but okay. And then I'm looking for this little red tie, which is right here. And I'm gonna line it up so this little hole's in front. And sorry if the microphone's really loud when I'm in here. Okay, so I'm now ready for the nebulizer. I'm gonna kind of hold my arm out so that it has some spot, some space. Here we go. So it sometimes takes a second for the nebulizer to start. And there you go, I see it going. I've got my tongue out. I'm just doing the step one now. Just waiting here and breathing my tongue out a little bit. Tighten it 
tighten this bag a little bit. So I'm just waiting here. So now I'm going to do uh, the next step, which is la uh, intense breathing. So I'm definitely kind of tasting something. I'm definitely tasting some bitterness in my mouth there. And that would be a failure, but I'm gonna keep going to the next step. So I'm gonna turn my head to the, to the right. Ooh, I can really feel it when it, the head turn. Yeah, and then I'm turning to the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna do head down. And I gotta crush down a little bit to go up. Head up. I'm actually surprised I'm not tasting it that badly in here. But I can definitely taste it. It's definitely bitter. So I think this is definitely a failure here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show uh, next a... Um, yeah, it's like, it's very subtle. And if I crack, I've probably some bitterness in the air. But what I like to do is um, uh, when I'm inside sometimes, especially when I have a mask that's passing and at the end of doing all the things and it passes at the end, uh, and I'll show you the next mask that I'm gonna do, which hopefully will pass because it's passed for me before, uh, what I like to do is crack the mask open a little bit at the bottom or the top or the side and then see how long it takes me to actually taste the bitter to really realize, okay, wait, if it was leaking, I would have noticed it. So now I have this 3M mask on, which is an official certified, NOSH certified uh, N95. And I'm going to get back into the hood. I'm going to test this again uh, or test this mask and see uh, if I can pass with this on. Now I'm just standing here and I'm just breathing. And I kind of have my tongue out. <sighs> just breathing normally. Tongue out through my mouth. Okay, so now I'm going to do the intense breathing. Still don't taste anything. Now I'm going to do the side, head to the left. Head to the right. Head up. Head down. I think normally you're supposed to do these things for longer, but I'm getting kind of tired here, so I'm going a little faster. So now what I'm going to do is talk. I'm just talking, which is what I was doing before, but now it's part of the steps. One of those seven steps. So I'm just talking normally, range of words. Don't just say the same thing over and over again. And I'm talking, breathing out of my mouth, tongue kind of sticking out, not tasting anything bitter at all. Nebulizer is still running. This whole thing is filled up with the uh, bitter solution, bitter uh, aerosols. And so now I'm gonna do the jogging in place thing. Move my head around, da -da 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 -da. all over. I'm not getting anything. And then now I'm going to uh, do the uh, normal breathing again. <sighs> I'm really not tasting anything at all whatsoever. Nothing. So now I'm a little skeptical. I'm like, am I actually able to taste anything? Like, what's going on? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack the bottom of my mask just a little tiny bit. Ooh, 
I taste it a little bit. Now to crack it a little bit more. A little bit more. Ooh, a little bit more. Oh, nasty. So that tells me that if there was a break in the seal in this mask, I would have detected it in that hood. And that actually, in all likelihood, if I did a normal qualitative fit test at a hospital in one of their fancy $800 hoods with this mask on, I would probably also pass. So that's the process. Um, and it's a little awkward for sure, 